everybody, I'm Max. I'm a freelance front-end developer. I'll be talking about offline web applications today, and I'm going to specifically be focusing on Service Worker. Now, when I say offline web applications, some of you might think of App Cache. Who in here has heard of App Cache? Or even who in here has used App Cache? And then who in here is aware of the pitfalls of App Cache? Yeah, I thought so. So App Cache is a douchebag, pretty much. There is a great article on List Apart with the same title. If you want to build cross-browser compatible offline web applications, you should look into App Cache. But please look up <laughs> App Cache is a douchebag because there are, there are a lot of problems with how it works and how it's been built. Now, the same person who wrote that article, Jake Archibald, has been the main driver behind the service worker spec. He said, all right, App Cache is, it works, but it's really weird and you have to work around a lot of the issues. So let's make, let's make it better. Let's, make it, let's build a better solution. So how does service worker work? Well, you've got your client and you've got your web server. And the client sends a request to the web server. The web server sends back the files. And then your user with the browser, the browser renders the page. And then as it passes the script, it passes a magic line. Um, that magic line is navigated to the service worker, the register. And that tells the browser, hold on a second. I have to install the service worker. So the browser goes, all right, hey, service worker, you're now installed. Now, this service worker acts as a man in the middle between the browser and the web server. It's a script in JavaScript that you can just write, and you can do, in, you can do whatever the hell you want in there, basically. And the great thing about service worker is it gives you access to a cache. So you can then open a cache and say, hey, browser, give me all the files you got. Give me the website, and let's put it into the cache. Let's Let's save it offline. And then on the next visit, when the user comes, comes back, service worker intercepts the web request that went out to the web server and says, hey, Cache, do you have any files for that website? And the Cache says, yeah, sure. We cached them last time, so you know I have them now. And the service worker just sends them over to the browser. And there was no network connectivity needed for any of this to happen. Everything here happened offline, and the web server wasn't even touched. So your whole application can be saved offline and can be always available to the user. So what does this look like in practice? We've got, so this is my main JavaScript file, bundle.js. It's a lot of code, but don't worry about it. We basically just check for browser support, because that's not perfect yet. And then we, we register the service worker. And this is the, the magic line that makes everything happen. And as you can see, we specify a JavaScript file. And as I said, you can write anything into that JavaScript file. It's just a web worker running in the background. It's not tied to any tab or browser window. It just runs in the background of the browser and does whatever it does. Now, in my implementation, it'll, it'll use the cache. So the entire file is built upon event listeners. The browser sends out events, and then this file intercepts them and does something with them. The first event we should listen for is the install event. That, that, that's what happens, that's what gets called when, the, when, we, when we register the service worker. Now we then open the cache and put all of the files from the browser into the cache. It's not really hard. Then on second visit, when the, when the, when the fetch event comes in, when the service worker is installed and the browser contacts the web server, the service worker has an event listener to the fetch event. So now it knows, all right, the browser tried to connect to the web server. It then responds to this event with the cached files if these are available. And that's it. That's everything that now, now the browser already has the web page without any network connectivity. But what happens if there, are, if there aren't any cached files? We have to you know, deal with that as well. So what we do is, we clone the request because network requests get consumed and you can only use them once. So once you've done something with a network request, you can't use it again. Then we fetch the files from the server. Now, as you can see, this is using a lot of promises and fetch and a lot of APIs that aren't really available in the browser right now. But these come baked into the service worker. So you can use fetch and you can use promises without worrying about any browser support or anything because service worker works with these and they're implemented. Now, if we got an error, if the, if the file wasn't returned from the server directly, we just return that error file, that error response to the browser and let the browser handle it. 
if there is response though, we clone the response again and then open the cache, put the new files into the cache and return the files from the server and the browser has the files again. <coughs> now, all of that seemed rather easy. What's the problem here? Well, <laughs> browser support. Um, as you can see, it's implemented in most Google products and Opera. And it's currently available if you enable it in Firefox via flag, which no user probably does, so don't bet on that. And it's under review in Edge, but it probably won't come to Internet Explorer and Safari for a while. That's why you have to fall back to App Cache, but again, please be aware of the pitfalls of that. Also, you have to use HTTPS. This is really powerful stuff. You basically, you basically install a man-in-the-middle attack. If we let all of that data be sent unencrypted, we would have a real problem, a real security vulnerability. So you have to use HTTPS. Now, I'm going to try to demo it here. Let please demo gods. <laughs> Let's try this. So I've got a demo site set up. Um, you can visit this um, on your own device as long as you use Chrome, either on Android or on a normal page. So as you can see, this page loaded. I'm connected to the to the Wi-Fi, so um, this all works. Now, when I turn off the Wi-Fi and I try to open another page, like let's say Facebook, Chrome is going to say unable to connect to the internet. But if we try to open this page again in a different tab, it doesn't, I can even close the browser. You open it and it's still there. No network connectivity needed at all. I'm not plugged into any LAN. There's no Wi-Fi connect co connectivity. There's no internet connectivity and your application is still working. That's Service Worker. Thank you very much. Any questions? How yeah. do you develop for it if you need HTTPS? Um, it works on localhost as well. So while you develop for it, it, it just works on localhost. It's enabled in Chrome. So if you if you visit a page on localhost, it's work. It, it works. But as soon as there's another URL other than localhost, you've got to use HTTPS. Yeah, back there. <coughs> How, how much overlap is there um, if you have to use AppCAD as a fallback? How much code reuse can you do? App it's two different. Things. Yeah, App Cache is completely different. App so Cache it's works. It's basically a file yeah. with file names in it. So that there's no scripting at all. Like the browser just caches those files and that's it. The problem with App Cache is that it never tries to get new files from the server. So your user always sees the old files. Whereas with Service Worker, whenever you you, whenever the browser repasses the page, it, re it reduces the service work again and the new files get fetched. With App Cache, <laughs> you've got to change the manifest file, so the file where the um, file names are in, so, the, so it gets the new files from the browser. It's really weird. Like, it's, it's, it's absolutely horribly done. I don't know why they did it that way, but that's just the way it is. But so basically right now you still have, until service work is more, um, more commonly supported, you basically have to implement two things, right? Yeah, so but one is just a file. Yeah, yeah, but one is basically a file with file names in it, which isn't that difficult to to do. Yeah. Especially so if you're minifying your JavaScript <laughs> file and your CSS file. Except for the pitfalls. <laughs> yeah, well, except for the pitfalls, yeah. <laughs> True that. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, when does the browser, the browser decide to call the service work? Based so, on the online offline status? Um, what, as soon as the service work is registered once, it always calls the service worker, no matter if you're connected or not. But since, since the service worker gets the new files again when it's registered, because you know you get the, new, you get the old files from the service worker, and the browser renders them, and then it registers the service worker again. That refreshes the service worker and calls the install event again, which means the service worker gets the new files and then caches those. So basically, yeah. <laughs> but there is no automatic uh, hash request to see out of the service worker. No, nothing. Oh, you, you can do, as I said, whatever you do in there, you do in there. Yeah. It's, all, it's, it's all your scripts. It's so any version checks and so you have to do yourself? Yeah, basically. If you want to do version checks, you have to do them yourself, yes. Yeah? <laughs> Still no question.
Any other questions? Uh, just, um, uh, where's the whole stuff stores then? So, so is it is it, is it, is it, is it, is it kind of one of the standard HTML5 storage things? Or is it, uh, no, it's stored in index DB, which is... <laughs> That's another really weird <laughs> API that browser exposes to you, which is really hard to use, basically. But it's it's sort of like local storage, basically, <laughs> more or less. Okay. But can users also see what gets stored, or maybe just block sites from maybe just piling up tons and tons of, of stuff on their hard disk? So Not yet. I don't think so. Would be kind of an yeah. exploit-like thing. Yeah. So. There are some limits because. Gmail yeah. apps asks you if you if they can increase the DB to yeah, yeah. 20 gig max. Sort there of. are some limits with the database, but <coughs> the user doesn't know how much 50. you store. 50, yeah. You, yeah. There's, so the, there's browser settings for that. Oh, there are? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you. There, okay. Apparently, there are browser settings. Depending on the browser, it's more or less obvious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's good to know, though. Yeah, so the, the database has a data limit, which is apparently 50 megabytes or yeah. something. Also Amazon. <coughs> so it, it stands on the browser. It, it, yeah, it's, it's really browser. 10 megabytes, um, All right. Chrome and, and so 50, and so on the first step. All right. Yeah. So that's sort of browser dependent. But you can't manage the content yourself. No. Yeah. yeah. So in the beginning, there were uh, all these clear buttons for that separate. The cookie. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Or any other answers that I don't know? <laughs> no? Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. <laughs>